The ultimate goal of an ignition system is to deliver a spark across the gap of the spark plug. This initiates the burning of the air fuel mixture and that's where we get our power. As easy as all that sounds, the hyperbole and allegorical facts surrounding this are endless. Let's see if we can sort through the hype. It will be easiest to begin at the end. As the spark jumps across the end of the spark plug, it generates a momentary, about 10 millionths of a second, temperature spike of about 100,000 degrees Fahrenheit. This sets the air-fuel mixture around the spark to burning. This tiny beginning of the burn is referred to as the flame kernel. The kernel's outer boundary is referred to as the flame front. The flame front grows, and a moment later, the whole air-fuel mix is burning. Now, let's see if we can do an experiment and learn some theory. I have a 12-volt battery here, rated at 600 amps. It's a car battery. Pause for a moment. The wiring in your house is rated probably at around 20 amps. This is a 600 amp battery. That's a lot of energy. Now I'm going to take the positive from the battery, connect it to the end of the spark plug. I'm going to take the negative, connect it to the other end of the spark plug, and watch what happens. Nothing. Why is that so? Why is it when I have 600 amps of power so close here that nothing is going to happen? The answer in a word is resistance. There's a gap of about 35 thousandths of an inch at the end of this spark plug. That's tiny. It's just a bit larger than the thickness of a credit card. But to electricity, that's a huge problem. Even with hundreds of amps this close, it can't do anything because 12 volts is not enough to jump across that gap. The amps do the work, but it's the volts that carry them to the job. A famous electric principle is called Ohm's Law. Ohm's Law helps us to appreciate that it takes one volt to push one amp through one ohm of resistance. The gap at the end of the spark plug represents thousands of ohms of resistance, so we need thousands of volts to get across this gap. We have a problem. Where are we going to get thousands of volts to jump across this gap when all we have in our car is a 12-volt battery? In our next video, we'll find out.